Thank you very much. Uh, great to be here today. Uh, what a great crowd. Uh, standing room only. Um, Want to get over the finger food first. Uh, we're not a catering company, so you know, came up with the idea of using your fingers to feed yourself information. So you now you guys kind of gonna get the background. Um, we're uh, up in, uh, based out of Vancouver. We're about 120 developers around the world. We actually started out as a video game company, but we've actually pivoted to the enterprise market. And I'm gonna kind of give you the story about, one, why did we pivot um, some of the successes and how we're actually seeing that market evolve. Um, I think it's actually very relevant to actually the previous talk. You know, as a business, we kind of see kind of three exponential technologies. So when we think of Internet of Things, we're kind of moving beyond that to early devices have embedded intelligence. So you're getting kind of smart, relevant data. And kind of combine that with, you know, artificial intelligence is a bit of a buzzword bingo from my point of view. I think the sales pitch is a little bit ahead of the, not necessarily the technology, but the people that can actually implement it. You know, it's much more actuarial work, statistical modeling. But again, it's about making, turning really, I think, data, that data you get into information for people to uh, derive insights and solutions. And what we're seeing is that the opportunity is with holographic technology, spatial computing, it's really taking these really complex data sets and operationalizing that for our customers, driving incredible productivity. Um, it's really, really interesting as we see these things operational, just how we're cracking problems that have been around for over 100 years. And again, it's that that convergence of technologies. And if you think about even some of the talks that you guys have been through today, you're gonna to see more and more of this. It's like, it's not just spatial computing, it's how, does, how do you combine that and uh, combine a lot of data. I said there's data everywhere, how do you pull that up and you'll give that kind of, that workforce, enable that workforce to, to drive productivity enhancements. But I wanna take a step back. Why would I pivot my company from making video games? It's fun. So how many people here are wine drinkers? Everybody, come on, be honest. How many people have actually been to Napa Valley? There's a, there's a small winery called Reverie up there. And I was there uh, a couple years ago and uh, where I enjoyed this wine taste and this guy comes down and you know, he's an older guy and I'm like, hey, you know, what, you know, what, what are you doing here? Oh, my son owns the winery, oh, that's great. Uh, so what do, you, do you just do this? No, no, I, I, you know, I do this, but I do some other things and investments, but uh, I'm mostly retired, which starts the question. So, you know, what did you do before this? He goes, well, I'm the founder of, co-founder of EDS and Associates. My business partner was Ross Perot. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> okay, which also has the question, so like, I'm an entrepreneur. How the fuck did you start EDS Associates? And he's like, uh, well, we're the guys that figured out uh, to doing mainframe installations for uh, back office credit card processing. He goes, you have no idea. There was literally thousands of people and size of football people just manually doing this credit card processing and we radically changed that with mainframe computers. We figured that last six, six inches out and it just hit me like a freight train. That, you know, that's what we want to be looking for is those big problems. And I'm a history major, so you just start looking at these companies been around for 100 years. And guess what? There's processes sitting in those companies They've been around for 100 years. And it also was really important for me is that the problems have to be big enough to warrant the investment. I tell our clients, we build custom F1 cars. You better be able to afford the racetrack. And timing's incredibly important because if you pick too soon, like a bunch of VR companies last year, you will run out of money. And so timing is really important, especially in, that's why I have the IBM PC. You think about, you know, we're really focused probably on the top 500 companies in the world that actually have those big problems. Now, timing, you think of Moore's Law, really from the mainframe computer, it wasn't really to the PC with the invention, like, you know, obviously uh, that you kind of went to kind of small and medium-sized businesses. And then finally, it was the consumer uh, product that came out, let's say the Nintendo, that the price point became, that, uh, that became available to a kind of a mass adoption. So, Choose wisely. If you're investing in AR and VR consumer product, be very careful. I'm not sure the market really is there yet. The devices and the power has to come down. But choose, even a small and medium-sized business, you know, also choose wisely. Do you have enough money to make it through the desert? This is a very famous scene from Lawrence of Arabia. Do you have enough water to get to see to the end of the desert? M most projects fail. There's a great study out by Gartner about IBM Watson projects. They followed 50 projects. 48 of them have been canceled. The only two that are still uh, going are the projects that they're so far in, everyone will lose their jobs if they quit. So again, timing is incredibly important. And this is a really great, this is actually, this is someone else's slide, but I, I had to put it in. You know, this is really, really important, is like, we're in that excitement phase in the demos, and you have to start in the ROI, or you're gonna slide back and drown in the valley of tears. 
You know, and this is why I think being an entrepreneur, especially the people you raise your hand if you're in the enterprise market, pick a big enough problem. Because if you don't pick enough problem, you're never going to actually deploy. And this is actually where you got to be very careful. Like, and we actually start, and this is really important, people usually start the outside of this, this kind of frame. They start with, we're going to do machine learning, and then they try to find the business problem. You have to start at the core of the business. What is the business problem that can drive real radical improvements to my business, and then how do I leverage technology outside of that kind of picture? You know, and, and I think it really is, it's the convergence. You're not just going to do like an AR project, but you're going to do an AR project that levers all the data you were capturing with cognitive computing, and you're going to have you know, a multiple different kind of views into that data source. That's kind of a project. Well, well what is that problem? You know, that's how, what you have to do is to identify. You know, it's a little bit about the company. So one of the things that we, I want to talk about a little bit is like, how do we actually solve these problems? Because this is actually really interesting. So one of the things that we kind of learned at Finger Food is that we had to get outside of the office, especially with AR and VR and some of these things. Like we actually rented a massive warehouse. <laughs> Big space, big problems. Especially with spatial computing, like you're not going to be able to figure out big problems in, this, in front of your desk. You want to be able to walk around and through data. Conceptualize stuff very large at scale. It's kind of different, never shot. I'm going to get to why there's a semi-truck in that space too shortly. <laughs> so again, I, I want to go back in time, and this is really interesting, and, and this is for everybody here, like especially if you're an entrepreneur or even an enterprise, and I kind of alluded to this before, really go back in history. And one of the really interesting things is, is that there's remnants of the Industrial Revolution in all companies in enterprise. And I really do believe, you think of the last probably 30 years in computing, have really been driving, uh, especially from a, a consumer standpoint, really about consumer. But if you go to most companies, I mean, banking still run by COBOL, right? And uh, some of the products that we're doing, we're changing processes. They've literally been doing things the same way for hundreds of years. And so there's something really interesting opportunities. I think these technologies is really going to drive that you know, radical improvement of productivity with companies, which quite frankly, it's important work. You raise productivity, it's statistically proven, it raises the, the, the standard of living for everybody. So let's talk about transform. I'll give you guys some kind of core, let's make timing, timing's good. I'm good. <laughs> I'll give you some, some core examples. These are worth taking some time on. So one of our clients is Packard one of the biggest truck manufacturing companies in the world. And they have plants in, uh, so they own the Kenworth brand, they own Peterbilt and DAF in Europe. I don't know if you really know this, but kind of going back to the history context, designing trucks is really interesting. So General Motors in 1920 said, God, how do we better design trucks or visualize it? So they were just doing a drafts and papers. So they decided to actually go and say, well, let's do clay models. So, you know, since 1920, this is the entire industry, it was this a big improvement. They actually, by hand, I'm not kidding, do uh, you know, build, take a clay and then subtract it to actually look into what that, that vehicle could look like. And if they don't like it, they scrap it. And that's really been that industry practice. It didn't really change until, as I talked about the PC, until about 1985, where they introduced AutoCAD. <laughs> so instead of a draftsman, they actually did an AutoCAD and they still did the clay model. We walk in and we're like, I think we might be able to change that. So we went from a clay model to a massive hologram. You know, it's one of the biggest holograms in the world in terms of actual functional deployment right now. And so why is it so important? Because it takes about six months to build a full-scale model out of the kind of doors of, of AutoCAD. It takes us three days once we get that data. More importantly is you have end possibilities. So you want to look at a different fairing package, different lighting package, different hood, but then also be able to uh, look at the aerodynamics. So again, we're combining all these data sources and rapidly transferring the process. But not only do we change the process for PACCAR, it's just going to it's changing the, higher, the entire industry. All companies are actually going to move, move to this. And then what the most interesting part of this project is we kind of figured out this concept of compound innovation. This is really, really important, especially for enterprise market. And you kind of alluded to it in the last talk. We can, if it's kind of the risk of ROI, risk of not investing. What if I don't invest in this? Is that compound innovation works much like compounding money. So if you can do something 10% faster than your competition, over the course of seven years, you'll take a generational leap across your competition. And between seven and 14 years, your competition just gets wiped out. And if you go look in history, this comes true over and over and over again. How do we do this? I mean, I have 120 people. We transform an entire industry. These are massive programs with massive savings. Seven people. Seven people in six months. 
not only transform a process that's been around for 100 years, transform an entire industry. But look carefully at that, that team. Look at the creative aspect, creative director, associate creative director, storyboard artist. There's really only two technical people on that project. Why is that? It's because the technology is very accessible, but we focus on the problem solving. So when you think of designing teams around this, it's not just like throw a bunch of engineers. You need the creative problem solvers in those teams or you're not going to be able to really kind of radically rethink about this. We actually really think about it at Finger Food, and I'll kind of talk about that shortly, is that we think of life as but a play. And so we're re-architecting the human experience around these kind of exponential technologies. Still good. Yeah, I know, I was <laughs> checking. At least you have a clock here, so I want to make sure I get through this. You know, and actually this is one of the, this is our storyboard art, artists that, that kind of came up with this. And this is a really important piece. When you actually develop these, um, these, uh, these technologies, for you as a business, you actually develop a knowledge arbitrage, which is incredibly more powerful than price. You're not deriving price. You know something that someone else doesn't. That is way more powerful. And you can drive way more value as a business. So another great thing, so at Build this year, uh, we were very fortunate to be part of the day, day two keynote. I'm not sure if you've seen this. But we've been working with Circus Soleil on radically changing how they actually design their, um, their large scale uh, productions. And I want to talk about that little deeper process when we talk about actually building these different acts. This is actually the original whiteboard that came, that was before you could actually see the, uh, the final thing. You even see the date, uh, October 7th. We launched the, we did a Microsoft build, I think it was, it was in uh, mid-bay, so you can see in a very short time frame. But very notice how we do act one, act two, act three. We really think about that, like life is a play, so how am I gonna rewrite that experience? And so it's a great, great thing for you guys to conceptualize when you're trying to solve business problems. And again, back to the top, break it down in pieces, break it down in acts. And then actually get a storyboard artist. Everything we do, we don't actually really go to tech right away. We have like, we have a team of artists just kind of concepting out what this could look like, especially with UI paradigms. User experience is incredibly important when you're trying to visualize so much data. And the biggest thing that we learned with kind of Circus LA, it was more about moving shapes around to get a feel of how they actually design these sets. It's all about spatial awareness. And honestly, I mean, we're, this is probably one of the biggest I'm not saying is the biggest, but it's actually deployed now, is you know, moving spaces around the size of a small football field in AR. And, you know, and it's just it's mind blowing for them because they've never been able to do this before. And it's not about for them saving money, it's about creating the, the best play possible. Again, it's about that arbitrage to do something that people could never imagine possible. And we take that to finally this, right? So, you know, this is kind of the, I always have it when you design these applications, make sure you have the final reveal. So go around and then ta-da. Kind of lastly, the, I think a huge opportunity for, for, for customers and enterprise market is really rethinking the consumer experience. But we're very fortunate to work with Lowe's Innovation Lab, and they were investing a lot. Obviously, they're competing with Amazon. And, you know, how do we actually drive you know, a different kind of experience for our consumers? And so using the Gashi Machine Vision, this was actually at Ignite last year. You know, people submit their Pinterest photos, and then you show up to Lowe's and put your AR headset on, and this kitchen is like 76% based upon inventory available of the kitchen that you would like, radically transforming a consumer experience. Final shot here. It's pretty good, I'm right on time. And so, big thing is, my, one of my points is take away, retool your workforce. Incredibly important. This is not an engineering problem, it's a human design problem. So the tech is pretty accessible, so it's how do you leverage that to and that creativity. And trust me in your organizations to make this, to, the change that we're talking about, change management is critically important. We do not start a project without the CEO's approval. This is critically important. Do not start with an IT department. This is where innovation goes to die. You need to start with executive sponsorship. Because if you don't, because you're gonna drive such radical change to the business, you need it from the very, very top. Thank you. All right, Ryan, thanks. Um, great visuals on the, the presentation. So um, let's answer a couple of questions. Yeah, fire away. Uh, which skills do game developers need to serve the industry market and how bright is their future? 
No, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, it's, a, it's a critical piece is to create a problem solving. So game developers very specifically have been dealing with new platforms all the time. So PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and you have to be creative on creating new experiences with this new tech. So that really kind of binds well. But it's also the art, rendering, texture compression, like all the tricks of video game developers is actually specifically useful for kind of holographic uh, design. And honestly, from my point of view, um, it's I think from a game development perspective, it's just a huge open opportunity like we're so early in the market if people are like why are you sharing this I'm like go west like there is so much opportunity in the market right now all right let's take uh, one more quick one and yeah. that is how do you start approaching these industry giants and get them on board these projects how do you get them to take that leap of faith um, so I think uh, you know, align yourself with uh, partners is really critical and, sh and be able to have something to showcase. So we definitely do start with demos, like go around with the demos to actually show people what the potential is. And mostly, like, especially with something like HoloLens, I mean, I've been there, we show the uh, VP, VP's like, holy shit. And then you show this, he brings in the senior VP, brings in the CIO, then the CEO sees it. So a lot of this technology, you guys, you're very familiar, you've been here for years, oh, I kind of know it. It is unfamiliar in enterprise for the most point. So your opportunity for wow factor and there's a window will obviously close is still there if you knock on people's doors pretty much if you look at every annual report right now uh, digital transformation and how do I innovate are the two top things that every CEO in the world is thinking about if you're the person saying yes I know how to innovate and honestly hit the buzzwords I come from Silicon Valley <laughs> and I innovate and I'm an engineer they're gonna take your meeting so that's probably a, a great approach All and, right. and has been my approach so <laughs> said from a gentleman who comes from Vancouver so yes. <laughs> well we do have an office down here in upload VR so there you go so, yeah. great Ryan thank All you right. thank you Thanks so much.